Okay guys, uh, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how I um, take my sturgeon skins and get them ready to put them on a bow. I've got a lot of questions about how I do this. Um, so we're going to go through the process of fleshing and then salting and then degreasing and then making sure that they're ready for bow or if you want to then tan them for, for uh leather you can do that on your own I don't really do that uh, but if that's something you want to do this is how you get them ready for that now a lot of the taxidermists out there are probably going to criticize me but hey this is how I do it if you don't like the way I do it do however you want to do it now the first thing is we have a sturgeon skin this is how I get them I get them frozen sent to me someone has already sort of filleted them um, took the meat off, we're just going to throw the skins away and I have them instead. Uh, these are farm raised sturgeon, these are not wild caught, but uh, alright let's get to it. First thing you're going to notice about this is you need to wash them off. These are very slimy fish, they're really coated with whatever the fish, I don't know if it's mucus or slime or what we're talking about here, but it's, it's a little off putting but not really off-putting. Off-putting is the wrong word. It's just a little hard to work with. So what I do is I just give them a, a wash and then I try to wipe, wipe them down and this, this sort of black uh, stuff that comes off, it's not the color of the skin, it's just whatever was sort of on the skin. And uh, also, these are bony fish and these, these starry night pearl bony structures will tear up your paper towels if you're using a paper towel. So go from what would be head to tail to wipe them off. And otherwise you're going to leave a bunch of paper on there. Not that that's an issue, you're going to end up washing this again. It's just, you know, for me I'm just trying to be efficient. Alright. Now, I'm going to start by trying to give this a little bit of a fillet. Um, as you can see, in this part of the skin, there isn't a lot of meat there. So that's something that's enough just to scrape off. That's pretty much just scraping, but when you get down in here, there's quite a bit more meat on. So we're going to see if we can get any of that off. I'm using the boning knife given to me. Look at this beautiful, beautiful wood on this knife. Richard from Deep Fried King, the Hog Zone, gave me this knife, and it is hands down the best fillet, uh, fish filleting knife I've ever worked with. All right, so here we go. So. Let's just see if we can get any of the meat off. Yep, coming off very nicely. Now, these bony spines here on the skin that run down the, the skin here, I'll give you these, they will mess you up. They will mess up your uh, filleting process. And you don't want to cut them off when you're in the process of doing this. So you may have to fillet one side and then the other side if you can don't get too crazy with it this stuff is not that hard to use a fl uh, to flush afterward just just get like the, as much as you can you don't have to be crazy with it it's gonna take some elbow grease to do the flushing part but I'm calling this the filleting part the next part I'll show you is the, f the fleshing part you can see we're still getting a pretty good layer of skin off of this. Uh, excuse me, of flesh off. Now I don't know if you guys want to eat that or not. I'm choosing not to. I haven't done a really good job trying to preserve it. Um, it's not rotten. It doesn't smell bad. It doesn't even smell fishy. And it, you know, this sturgeon skin can be upwards of fifteen dollars a pound. So if you guys want to eat it, you know, more power to you. Someone's eating whatever came off of the fish prior, so it could be completely fine, but I'm just choosing to get rid of it. I don't know how to really prepare sturgeon, so if any of you guys have recipes, I'm, I'm, up, I'm open to them. How's it look through there? 
You can talk to me. My daughter is filming me as well. Oh, did it? Okay, okay. She's uh, using her new camera, but it ran out of batteries. So we'll stick with the one we got going. All right, got a little bit more here. Woo, there it goes. Starting to warm up, so the flies are going to start coming out pretty soon. It's just a fly, honey. It's not a bee. Okay, you guys get the idea. I'm going to stop it and then we'll move on to the next part. Alright, now I'm going to do some fleshing. And the fleshing, we go from, I'm going from the midline, again, where the um, uh, scales or the, these are called scoots. I'm going to go from the scoots out. And it, it's a little bit of a, actually, I'm going to come this way. It takes a little bit of effort, guys, because you'll see. There's not only flesh, but there's a membrane on here that, here, go ahead and pick that up and shine it right there. See this? Now, that's what we want. We want to get that completely down to there. Because what you get are these, like, fatty rib things, and they need to come off. And it's, like I said, you can be a little aggressive with this. These aren't, this is tough skin. But not so much that you. The, the one thing that happens in this is you don't really tear the skin with the uh, with the spoon, but you will pull one of the scoots up, and that'll you know that takes away from that really nice pattern. So let me show you. All right, let me borrow that. So this is what we're looking for. Here's where we are. We're going to make this look like that now. That's the goal. All right. Can you see? Not really. Okay, make it so we can see. You can hold it up. It's going to move a little bit, guys. Sorry about that. But I'm going with the skin. The head would have been here. The tail's down here. I'm going diagonally in the same direction as these sort of fatty, I don't know, cartilage or whatever it is. I don't, I don't know fish anatomy, sorry. But basically, like this. And you can see everything's coming off really nice. If you don't do this, no matter how much meat you get off, this white membranous part will still be on there. And you don't want that. It's gonna, it actually just, it turns your, uh, your skin a really dark shade of yellow. And it looks a little, like, a little rotten. And it doesn't look good. You can't get that nice, Starry night thing. I keep saying that when hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about when I say that. Alright, so I'm gonna work my way down this whole thing and I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Okay, so here's what it looks like when we're done. It's actually been stretched a little bit too, so it's longer. down the length of it. There we go. And let's flip it over so everyone can see. See all the membranes gone, all the, you know, there's little tag ends of flesh here, but I'll cut those off. We're going to wash this again, get all the little impurities off, but basically here's what we're working with. Nice long, kind of narrow, but perfect for a bow skin. All right, uh, three more to go. Hit the okay, here we are. We've got all four skins done, nice and flushed, cleaned up, and covered in pinned down and covered in salt. Actually, there's salt on the bottom as well. I'm going to add a little more because I see a few spots that could use it. But we're going to leave it in the salt here for 24 hours. And we're going to wash the salt off. So we've, we've fleshed. We are salting. We're going to wash the salt off tomorrow. And then we're going to do some degreasing. 
which is basically just re-soaking it in uh, uh, dishwater, or dishwater, um, Dawn dish cleaning soap. And we're going to show you how pristine they're going to come out when that is done. But uh, this is basically step two. We flushed, we salted, and now we let it pull out all... The reason I salt these skins and also when I do carp skins is because they're such oily fish. There's a ton of fat and oil in these skins that needs to come out, even if you're not tanning them. And uh, so that's 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 the reason. Like snake skins, there's they're usually so pristine as soon as you take them off their, you know, off the body, that uh, you really I, I don't even feel it's necessary to salt them. We're not tanning them, so I don't see there's you know we're just drying them and applying them to them to the bow. You really don't need to do much more. Um, barely need to flush them. But in the case of these skins, due to the oil content, I do feel a salting is a good idea. Anyway, there you go. Alright, we'll come back again tomorrow and wash them off and show you what we got. Mike from Boyer Bows, guys.
Okay guys, so here's where we are. I drained off the soap suds, gave them a good rinse, put them back in the bucket. We're going to lay them out and get the drying process started again. Here are my skins. And they feel, now that they've been in the soap, I left them in for about actually 24 hours. I don't know if you taxidermists out there think it's too much or too little, but I can tell you now, they feel different. Um, all of that greasy feeling that they had is gone. Um, and uh, they're not tanned, don't get me wrong, they are not tanned, but they, the grease is gone, so they feel more like leather than they do like slimy fish skins as they were before. All right, so what I'm going to do is just I'm going to lay them out. I'm going to pick all this extra uh, little tag pieces of meat off and pin them down again, and then we'll start the drying process. So, give you an idea where we are with this. This is what the skins look like without. Now. show you what it looks like when I've got them all pinned down. Alright, we're pinned up and ready to go. So what I do here is I do a partial dry. You'll notice that the flesh side is up, skin side down as far as the skins go. And the reason I do that is I really want the skin side to start drying a little more, I'm sorry, the, the flesh side here to start drying a little faster. Um, I'm not going to dry these completely into hard, you know, strips. I'm going to keep them a little malleable and then I'm going to roll them up and finish them under a fan for storage purposes. That way they're nice rolled up little looking rosettes or pine cone sized things until I'm ready to use them. Then when I'm ready to use them, I just drop them in water, get them pliable again and apply them to the bow or whatever application I have in mind for them. But that's basically how we do it. Um, yeah, I'll do one more video where one more scene where I do a uh, show you what how I roll them up and dry them, and then we'll be done. Okay, guys, Mike from Boyer Bows. Okay, guys, here's the uh, ready to be unpinned. You can see that they've gone transparent here. The white, all that this was white before. It's now you got color to it, and all I do is I take the pins off roll them up into this little pine cone shape roll them up really loosely and I'll wrap an ace bandage around it so it'll hold that shape and then uh, let it dry the rest, I mean it's they're pretty dry they're even a little drier than I I wanted right now but it's still a little bit malleable so rolling them up and I'll store them like this until I need them and that's how I do the sturgeon skins Hope you enjoyed this little bit. Uh, any questions, please leave in the comment section. Please don't forget to subscribe. And I'm Mike from Boyer Bows. I'll see you soon.